Good morning, Sweden, and good afternoon, Finland. My name is Kirsi Almsira, and I will be your host today. This event is a virtual one, but the content is very concrete. What to expect for today? The program consists of three parts. For the next hour, we will all be together watching and listening to the same content. Some guests will join us here in the studio in Vanta, Finland, others in our studio in Stockholm and via a video link from Sweden and Finland. At about 1 p.m. Finnish time and at noon in Swedish time, we will have a short break. After the break, we will split to country-specific events in local language, Sis, Suomeksi and Posvenska. Before moving forward, a few practicalities. I hope you can enjoy a good quality picture and sound, but in case you have technical issues, you can find some helpful instructions under the help tab underneath the stream window. And in case you cannot join us for the whole event, a recording will be shared after the event. Today is about giving you information and answering your questions. So I encourage you to send those questions using the chat feature that you can find next to the stream window. And now it's time to welcome our first guests who represent the parties behind this whole project. The CEO of Nordion Energy Hans Kreisel and the CEO of Gasgrid Finland, Olli Sipilä. A warm welcome from uh, my side to this uh, important, almost historical ev event when we as two TSOs from both sides of the border get together to accelerate the energy transition and, and boost the development of the industry in and around the Botnia Bay. My name is Hans Kreisel and I'm the CEO of uh, Nordion Energy. And hello everybody and also welcome from my behalf to this great day. Uh, I am Olli Sipilä, uh, CEO of Gasgrid Finland. I've been part of this energy transition over 20 years towards cleaner world. And uh, I think now we are reaching a step to, to uh, make the final push for the carbon neutral world. And I think the Nordics, for the first time in history, can have this opportunity to create secure, affordable, clean and independent energy system. And this will happen through hydrogen economy and hydrogen infrastructure. But uh, as well, like the Nordic welfare state, these things doesn't happen by itself. These things must be enabled. And I think uh, Hans and I share the same passion and, and responsibility to support and the Finland and, and Sweden in this transition. And we think that the infrastructures are the key in these transitions. They will enable green industrialization, they will improve and enable economic growth and, of course, they will enable decarbonization. And this whole infrastructure will, will also connect us to the, the wider European uh, uh, energy systems in developing in future decades. I would see that the, this will all help us to reach European energy dependence. And therefore, we have planned this journey going towards the common goal in green transition. And I would like to give you, Hans, the floor. Uh, start our 
journey and present how we were going to do it. So please, over to you. Yes, thank you, Holly. The first thing that we had to do is, of course, finding a name and, uh, and a branding for, for uh, this uh, huge and important uh, project. Uh, we have, of course, and you will see it now on your screens, and it's the Nordic Hydrogen Route with the subtitle Botnia Bay. In order to uh, make it possible for us to go further, and connecting more parts of the Nordic and the Botnia oh, and uh, the area around um, uh, the sea here. And we will, um, of course, uh, have the possibilities to um, also expand to other countries. The Nordic hydrogen route is the first European cross-border integrated large-scale hydrogen infrastructure in Botnia Bay. But Oli, uh, <laughs> now we are focusing on the Botnia Bay. Uh, why Botnia Bay? I think this, this region can have a, a potential to become a, a global magnet, which uh, attracts uh, new industries, uh, new, new growth, and of course job creation. Uh, and and uh, I think our colleagues uh, uh, Sara and Igor will explain more on the details why of the Botnia Bay Bay region. But I, I share one bit of bit of a, a, a concrete example here. Uh, there's a huge wind power potential, clean green electricity in the region, and we have also identified that there could be over 65 terawatt hour hydrogen demand from the existing and new industries. To give the perspective of this 65 terawatt hours of, of hydrogen demand, that is approximately equal of the Finnish electricity production annually today. So we are talking a, a completely new industry potential to be created in this region. And I'm, I'm very excited to to a, a be part of this, enabling this uh, creation of the new industry in this region because of its qualities. But I, I think kind of a, one question I would have if I would be in an audience that what on earth a, a pipeline infrastructure is do with this and, and it's, it's about electricity, why it's not just an electricity transform? So, so is, is something there you could open up, Hans? Yeah, yes, of course. And of course, we need to coexist uh, with electricity. I think that there's a great need of optimizing both uh, systems. But we as TSOs, we of course have a, also a, a task to um, make benefits for both for the society and for the industries. But I'll give you three very good tips on uh, why it's, it's logical to go further on with the uh, gas network. And I'll give you a bonus one uh, right in the end. The first one is uh, basically around cost effectiveness. So um, if you need to transport these huge volumes of energy that we're talking about from, yeah. from a big air from a big area then we need and transport transport it to the industry then we need to build doing it with the gas pipelines instead of electricity grids we have a cost efficiency that is to uh, a factor of two to four uh, the second reason is uh, that uh, a gas grid is a flexible grid it's a storage vessel in itself that makes it possible to, uh, to um, absorb the volatility of a lot of the uh, power production in the industry there. And it creates security of supply. And the third is uh, uh, the great need we have to uh, uh, make a, uh, a very solid ground for the wind power to produce, so they don't produce in minus price areas or or that we need to, to uh, construct um, infrastructure in just in order to keep uh, uh, the volatility um, uh, at hand. Giving you my bonus uh, though, and that is something that Oli and myself are struggling with when we are building infrastructure normally, and that is on the, on the permitting sides. It's uh, societal thresholds that we 
that we uh, see when we go through, um, take land, uh, go through land, when we uh, have to work uh, together with um, different environmental and climate issues. And th there we have a very clear advantage on the gas side. A gas pipeline, it's big like this, it's underground, it can transport huge volumes of energy, and the activities on ground keeps on going. If it's a farm, land, or, or whatever, it, it goes on above the um, above ground. Yeah. So um, I think we have a lot of uh, advantages going for us, uh, Oli, and also for our own uh, for our cooperation that we have. Yes, and I, I think we already have shared a, a good good cooperation, and, and we are looking forward this long and and a, a very deep uh, learning process, what we are together heading and what societies and stakeholders are heading through this green transition. And, and I think it's best, it's fastest to be learning together. And I, this area which uh, uh, is, is connected in many ways already, further connections there connecting this supply and demand of different clean energies, I think it's a great, great place to, to start and, and speed up this learning process and transition process because this region has all the qualities to become a, a great, great place. And what comes to us, us as a company is, I, I think we share also a background in cooperation. We have been cooperating through, for example, European hydrogen backbone process for the vision of the European wide hydrogen network. And I, I think through that we have learned that the, we, we share the same, same uh, uh, view on this energy transition. We share the same goals and view for this broad sustainability view for our stakeholders, societies, and for our companies. And of course, we are very keen to make this happen in real life for the, for the benefit of, of, of the all. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm uh, looking very excitedly at this, this cooperation going forward. And, and how about you, Hans? Any, any thoughts on that? Yeah, there are, yeah, there's a very clear merit, of course, in uh, us uh, creating a larger system. Both you and I, we've been in, in the infrastructure business in uh, uh, many years. And we've seen over the last decades also how uh, the infrastructure companies have built up, for example, energy exchanges, making it possible to trade. Uh, uh, commodities between uh, producers and, and uh, consumers. And for us, creating also a larger market here, we will make it easier for pro producers to find uh, consumers and getting a better pricing of the commodity. Creating competitiveness in the market here, both for the industries and for, for uh, the societies here. Very, very good. And I, I think uh, we, we are enabling things. So. So I'm, I'm uh, uh, very, very happy to, with these messages to kick, kick off this event. Um, I'm extremely keenly looking for the next two very distinct speakers from both of our countries. So uh, again, uh, thank you all very much to be with us in this event and the journey. And, and uh, let's, let's kick this event forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Hans and Olli. As further proof of the impact of this project, our next guest is the Energy and Digitalization Minister of Sweden, Kasajar Farmanbar. Thank you, <clears throat> and thank you for the opportunity to be here today at this event, making the starting point for the Nordic hydrogen route and for a cross-border hydrogen infrastructure in the Botnia Bay region. The Swedish prime ministers, the governments, and my goal is clear. We aim to create jobs throughout Sweden by leading the climate change. We are now in the middle of implementing the largest electrification transition of our time, 
to meet the climate challenges, <clears throat> to create more green industry jobs, and to strengthen Sweden and our resilience. A bit over two months ago, the government presented an electrification strategy, a comprehensive, concrete action plan with 67 measures to be implemented over the next three years. With this strategy, we take a holistic approach uh, to the condition of energy sector uh, to enable electrification and the transition that we're moving towards. The purpose of our action is clear. Two-thirds of Sweden's greenhouse, green gas emissions, greenhouse gas emissions come from transport and the industry sectors. Now they are moving from fossil fuels to electrification or to fuels using, produced by electricity. As you know, the electrification of our vehicle is going extremely fast, faster than anyone expected, and the change towards industrial process based on electricity rather than fossil fuels is also happening at a very rapid pace. We see new investments basically every week in this sector. The politics, the politicians, we the people, our job is now clear. We need to strengthen this ongoing development and work harder to increase the pace. Electrification is also the key to the labor market of the future, both through the thousands of jobs that it creates in the new green industry, through the jobs that the growing energy sector will require, and through the competitive advantages Sweden will have uh, at, at the chance if we continue to place ourselves at the forefront of technological development. If we can develop knowledge and know-how to work uh, on this sector, we can capitalize on that. When the whole world changes, the game plan changes, my strong objective is to see the jobs of the future to be created in Sweden and in the Nordic region, not in the rest of the world necessarily. To keep up with the rapid electrification of both industry and the transport sector, we have our work cut out for us. We have an electrical system built in another time for different needs. It is built for an electricity that usage that has been basically the same the last 30 years. We now move from an administrative phase to highly expans expansive phase, probably the fastest expansion of Sweden's energy and electricity grid ever. I see two major tasks ahead. Firstly, we must remove obstacles to the expansion of electricity production. We have already started by, may, by enabling increased production by facilitating offshore wind power. We also need to secure the continued expansion of onshore wind power. This is a comprehensive challenge, which requires everything from shortening permitting times and creating acceptance for new production and educating many people who will work with this record-breaking expansion in the coming decades. Secondly, we must ensure the transmission of energy. We are now greatly, greatly strengthening the electricity grade throughout the country through triple investments in the main grip over, over the next three years and investments on 100 billion Swedish kroners over the next 10 years. But we must do even more. In short, we must activate, activate all our resources required to develop the electricity, the electricity system and meet the needs of the future. In the whole mix, new energy carriers will have a central role. I am so glad and proud to be here today at this event, marking the starting point for the Nordic hydrogen route. In your aim to drive decarbonization, to support regional green industrialization, economic development, and European energy independence, you are at the center of the transition that needs to happen. I'm also very happy to be here today with my Finnish colleague. The troubling development we have seen in recent times with Russia's illegal, terrible, and unprovoked invasion of Ukraine has not only shown a harsh light on our dependency of fossil energy in Europe, and the risk associated with it. It has also stressed the importance, well, I would say the need for Nordic partnership and cooperation.
To conclude my remarks for today, it is clear to me that the efforts we make from a political point of view are important. They are absolutely necessary, but the change and the rapid development we see would not be possible without companies with visions for the future and the willingness to invest. Together, we can both secure our future by meeting the climate challenges, creating more jobs and increasing our resilience, and see that the Nordic region countries to be competitive and at the forefront of this development. Thank you. And thank you, Minister Farmanbar. This project clearly is important for Sweden and Finland feels the same. Let's welcome the Minister of Economic Affairs of Finland, Mikael Intila, to tell more about that. Dear colleagues, Kassier, dear professional hydrogen professionals and ladies and gentlemen, uh, first, thank you to the organizers for the invitation to this important event. Hydrogen is a massive opportunity for Finland and Sweden around the Botnian Bay. Hydrogen uh, manufacturing from uh, renewable electricity could be compared to something what oil use used to be. Uh, hydrogen is the new climate neutral lubricant of the economy. Uh, we need to make the most out of this new opportunity. Uh, this project is doing exactly that, making something new, bold and big. Uh, we need the new cornerstones for economic growth around the Botnian Bay. The Finnish government has already directed several hundred million euros financing to the hydrogen project. Uh, the government strongly believes in this opportunity and aims to do its part in pushing hydrogen forward. In the future, it is very important to take steps, steps to create international hydrogen market in the EU and beyond. Finland has been and, and will be active in the EU tables in defining regulations and promoting joint projects. Uh, this project could also be the birth of the international hydrogen markets in our countries. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish all the best to all in your important work. I would be happy to meet you all again when celebrating cornerstones and completed construction works. Thank you. And thank you, Minister Lintila. At this point, I remind you about the chat feature that you all see next to the player window. We will have a Q&A session in about 15 minutes, so keep the questions coming. Our next guests represent both Sweden and Finland and have played an important role in developing the Nordic hydrogen route from idea to reality. Welcome, Sara Kärki and Igor Vlasiuk. Good afternoon also from my behalf uh, here. Uh, we are here with Igor. Hello everyone. And uh, very excited to share more details about our Nordic Hydrogen Route Development Project. Europe is currently accelerating its energy transition efforts. Climate change has been the main driver for these efforts before, but now energy transition is more important than ever. Therefore, the EU Commission has uh, 
communicated new and even more ambitious targets for hydrogen. Gasgrid Finland and Nordion Energy have both participated in the European hydrogen backbone work, creating uh, together with 31 gas uh, infrastructure companies a vision uh, for the European hydrogen infrastructure and market. Our companies have been responsible for developing the vision for Nordics, Finland and Sweden. Today we start to execute the vision through our concrete project. Our joint hydrogen infrastructure, infrastructure project is called Nordic Hydrogen Route. And we believe that it will drive decarbonisation, support regional economic development and enable an independent energy future. Our mission is that by building up a cross-border hydrogen infrastructure in Botnia Bay region and an open hydrogen market by 2030, Nordic Hydrogen Route will accelerate the creation of hydrogen economy and new investments to support European energy transition and increase the access to green and competitive domestic energy. The main driver of this project is green industrialization. There are significant renewable resources in Botnia Bay region. We have estimated that about 48 gigawatts of wind capacity could be uh, developed in this region by 2040. With this uh, wind power capacity, one could produce about 170 terawatt hours of electricity, which is twice, about twice the electricity production of Finland today. We have also estimated that there will be potential, potentially significant demand for hydrogen by 2050, 65 terawatt hours. The demand is expected to rise from different sectors, from e-fuels production, fertilizers, green chemicals, iron, steel and metal uh, industries. It can enable creation of completely new industries and investments in the region. The Nordic hydrogen route is aiming to develop 1000 kilometers of kilometers of hydrogen pipeline in the Botnia Bay region. It will require uh, about 3.5 billion euro uh, investments or 36 billion Swedish kronos. This investment, however, is estimated to enable tenfold investments to wind power and electrolysis plants and even further investments to other parts of the value chain. It can also create close to 50,000 jobs by 2040. We have estimated that the Nordic hydrogen route would bring about a 3 billion euro uh, hydrogen market, assuming a hydrogen price of 1.5 euro per kilogram. This would allow for more than 20 million tons of CO2 emission reductions per year in 2050. The pipeline infrastructure would also support the energy system through sector integration and offer cost-efficient transportation of energy. Finally, the Nordic hydrogen route would improve the Nordic energy security by accelerating the replacement of imported fossil fuels with new clean energy carriers. And now Igor will continue with sharing more details of our project, how we have planned it. Thank you, Sarah. I will now uh, give you more insights on how we intend to develop the Nordic Hydrogen Route project over the next couple of years. We strongly believe that in order to achieve the benefits that Sara just showed you, we need proactive development. To us, this means a close cooperation and the joint development of this infrastructure with the key market players. Those are the producers of renewable electricity and also the green hydrogen, the industries that already exist in the Botnia Bay region and will adapt their processes to use the hydrogen, but also a number of Swedish, Finnish and international companies that will establish greenfield uh, industries, greenfield plants in the Botnia Bay region. 
other very important stakeholders to us in this project, uh, the policymakers, the authorities and the regulators, of course. Uh, and lastly, the communities are incredibly important. The uh, regions, the municipalities and the citizens on both sides of the, of the border. On the next slide, uh, we show you the high-level outline of the, of the project that we believe will support the creation of the hydrogen value chain in the Botnian Bay region. The start uh, this year uh, and the development over the next eight years will uh, finalize and end up in a fully functioning hydrogen market and an operating infrastructure by 2030. Just a few words on the, on the phases, the first phase that starts this year. This is about confirming the market need uh, th that we have already seen in the previously performed analysis, kickstarting the dialogue with all the market players, and of course, looking at the market design questions. The next phase that we intend to start in 2024, uh, this will be the design phase of the commercial development here. We need to look into the permit uh, situation and attain all the permits. We will develop the cost analysis and the business case. We will, of course, uh, develop the commercial framework around this project. Uh, and the final aim of all of this is to have a final investment decision by 2026. After that, we intend to construct the infrastructure in phases, eventually ending up in connecting all the sections in one, a fully operational network connecting both countries. And by 2030, having a safe and reliable operation of the infrastructure for many decades to come. On the next slide, I would like to share with you uh, some of the most important objectives we see for the first phase of the project, which starts now. Uh, the first one is to validate the market need through open collaboration. This is done in a close dialogue with the producers of uh, green hydrogen and the consumers of the green hydrogen. Uh, with that information, we will develop forecasts for the supply and demand in order to be able to plan <coughs> the technical outline. The next objective uh, is to assess the technical uh, viability, and this is about understanding the pip pipeline routing and the storage needs for this infrastructure. We will also take a look at the commercial attractiveness. This is both the cost uh, for uh, using this infrastructure, but the competitiveness as well, comparing this system, this energy system, to other decarbonization alternatives. Another objective uh, that I already mentioned is this uh, opening and initiating a close dialogue with the important stakeholders, and also increasing the awareness uh, among the uh, citizens uh, and population in the Botnia Bay region of the benefits of this infrastructure. The last objective, contribute to the development of the hydrogen market design and regulation, extremely important, and we intend to do it together with the industry and together with the energy companies that will produce renewable electricity and green hydrogen. The last slide from our side, uh, we, Gas Grid Finland and Nordion Energy, we call for an open collaboration. Our project team will contact many of you over the next couple of months. And lastly, we strongly believe that with this project, we start a successful development of a hydrogen market around the Botnian Bay region. Thank you. Sara and Igor, we are not done with you yet. Instead, we will invite you some company and move on to the Q&A session. Please welcome back Olli Sipila, Hans Kreisel and Minister Kasajar Farmanbar. So hello again, and let's start with uh, Minister Farmanbar. Uh, how do you see Sweden's role in a European hydrogen infrastructure and energy transition? I think Sweden and the Nordic companies, uh, Nordic countries, of course, play a, a great role. But we have a lot of fossil-free, green, renewable energy already. We see an increased production of renewable energy. And in order to, to, have, to facilitate more industries 
to move on to the green transition, the hydrogen will play a huge role and it, it will be at the center of this transition. Our energy that we have and the ones that we are installing in green energy production together with this hydrogen infrastructure will make Sweden and the Nordic countries to one of the major players, uh, that's actually at least my hope, within the Europe for, for the green transition. And there is a question to all of you there in uh, Stockholm and here in Vanta. What do you think is the most important takeaway from today's Nordic hydrogen route launch? Most important takeaway from today's Nordic hydrogen route launch. Uh, I would start one. One is is the cooperation and collaboration with all the stakeholders. This will be a, a entering a new world, but uh, if we look 20 years backwards in, in the Nordics and in, in Sweden and Finland, I think we have reached a huge step already in the green transition and decarbonization. So we have the experience and examples. So I think we this is the collaboration between the, each of one of us in, in the ground persons company stakeholders that is one one area i would like to raise but i would very interesting to hear other mm. other uh, uh, views as well what do you say hans do you say hans yeah so i'm just reflecting over one thing and that is that uh, when we come together around the botnia bay you should all realize that this is one of the areas in the world where we have uh, the best structure of our energy production i think we are like sub zero grams of CO2 per, per kilowatt hours. We have stable economies, stable geographies, geologies, and so on, uh, so, so forth. So we are addressing a lot of the existing industries in this region right now, but I can guarantee you that this area is very, very attractive also for a lot of new industry, uh, energy-dependent new industry to be established in, the, in this uh, area here. And I was just thinking of it because we've been talking about uh, the new industrialization of this northern area before. And now I think that this will be one of the things that could facilitate that sort of um, development. And what about you, Igor and Sara? Yeah, I, I would like to point out that we have a really great raw material in this region, wind. And we can use it uh, for the benefit of the society. We can create new products, uh, new value chains. And in, in that sense, work together, as was highlighted before. That's absolutely very crucial. And uh, create something positive for this region and for the countries and for Europe. Mm. And Igor and then Minister Farvambar. Yeah, yeah, I agree with the with the made remarks here. Of course, uh, I think I can add that uh, in our discussions with the with the industries, both in Sweden and uh, on the international arena, I think it will be a very interesting development that we may see uh, new industries uh, investing in the region that we maybe did not expect uh, five or ten years ago. So I think that will be a very exciting development that we will see over the next couple of years. And. Uh Minister Farmanbar, how important is cooperation with Finland and other Nordic countries in energy field, especially at this moment? How do you I see think that? it's absolutely crucial. Uh, what we see happening in Russia, what we see happening in, in, in Ukraine, makes it absolutely crucial for Nordic countries to cooperate, of course. And this is a huge step that we're taking. But let me also be clear, what we're doing today, this step that we're taking, that you are taking, is more than I think many people will, will realize. I would, I would compare it to the first main grid that were, was set up for electricity. That's the equivalent of, 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 of that infrastructure, but for the new green hydrogen, which will be one of the most important energy carriers for the future, for the industry, for transportation, and for the whole energy systems. So I think what we're doing today it itself is historical, but the thing that we're doing it together with, with the, our neighboring country, Finland, is really, really important, especially in this time. And there is a question, maybe for you, Oli. What happens uh, to the 
existing natural gas pipelines? Uh, I see if I take the whole Europe perspective, uh, the EU Commission vision, and I, I share that vision that uh, in a carbon neutral, energy independent Europe with a secure and affordable uh, energy system, the electricity and clean hydrogen infrastructures will be main part of the market. But the, today's gas network, the methane network, it will bring through the biomethane, through the synthetic methane, which is also produced from the hydrogen, clean hydrogen, and of course, natural gas with uh, carbon capture and storage, for example, it will bring flexibility, storages, all these elements to these electricity and clean hydrogen infrastructures. So we need this all. But in addition to that, the Nordics has one unique benefit. It's the district heating. When you produce clean hydrogen, the, it creates excess heat, which you can utilize in heating sector, replacing burning fuels like in fossil energy. Uh, you are both natural gas companies. Uh, so Hans, how does the future look for natural gas? Natural gas. How do you see that? So, so, so Chris, I would start off correcting you there and say we're not uh, natural gas companies. We are gas transporting companies. And for example, in Sweden, we have 35% of biogas, biomethane in our network, and that's going within di this decade all green. Uh, but uh, but you're you're to you're totally right, and um, uh, piggybacking on what uh, Oli just said, we, I think we will see the transition that uh, we are going to convert a lot of um, natural gas networks over to um, to uh, hydrogen, and we have we'll have an enormous increase of uh, biomethane production. I think that the Denmark, for example, they are aiming at within this decade uh, having uh, going all green and uh, we also have um, huge investments going on both on the european side and on the other parts of, of the nordic side in uh, in hydrogen so i think that uh, the logic behind gas pipelines is what i, I said before it's uh, the logic is there and that will prevail transporting big volumes of energy via a pipeline is a good idea. And there's a question, who pays for all this? I think uh, this is uh, something to do with uh, connect, uh, Nordic hydrogen route connecting to the European pipeline. Well, if I, if I start, start with that, is that the as you saw from the Saras and Igor presentation, the cost of transportation, when this market is, is uh, eventually uh, uh, ramped up and constructed, it's at, at the scale of today's uh, electricity or gas transmission in the Nordics. And in both of the areas, the Nordics already in these important infrastructures are one of the best in cost to quality. Uh, ratios. So I think uh, we have a, a great position to, to reach the same also in the clean hydrogen. And, and of course, then, then it's, it's like a market today that the users are paying for the benefits. But, uh, but we said that see that the, it will be as cost efficient as today's infrastructures. Mm. Uh, what do you see are open questions? Uh, you mentioned, uh, for example, storing. Yeah, of course, a, a, uh, in hydrogen, when you produce hydrogen, uh, storing is a big part. And, and this infrastructure can, uh, first of all, develop for the storage reasons. In the infrastructure, you can store hydrogen. In addition, you can transport it. So uh, I think these are the, all the benefits what the, uh, this kind of uh, infrastructure can bring for all the, all the users. And a question to all of you, how do you see the future uh, in cooperation with uh, energy field in Nordic countries? Mr. Farmanbar. I think, I think uh, I see a very bright future. As, as it's been mentioned, uh, we have uh, 
an abundance of, of wind. We have uh, hydropower in, in northern Sweden. So we have a lot of good base infrastructure to create energy, in this case, hydrogen. And hydrogen will be an enabler for a lot of industries and a lot of transportation to move on with the green transition. This cooperation that we're seeing over the border between Finland and, and Sweden will be really important to increase the level of investments, new industries that, that are coming, new job opportunities, and also creating a base ground for companies to learn and be good at this and be able to export this knowledge also to other countries. Uh, so I see this is a very bright future. And we, in these dark times, if I may say so, we really need this bright future to look forward to. So from that point, I am really glad to be here today when we see we're taking the first steps to, to green hydrogenization of, of the Bosnian Bay region. And uh, Hans, how do you see the future? Yeah, I think we have a long tradition around uh, the Baltic Sea to cooperate uh, on the e energy-wise. So I think that uh, we have a, a very good cooperation on the electricity side, for example, uh, already. And we've been over decades working together with the countries around uh, the Baltic Sea to uh, create uh, security of supply and the market openings there. One example is, for, for example, the, 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 the cable between Sweden and Lithuania. That was opened a couple of years ago. Uh, so I, I, I think that uh, we have a good platform to stand on and we are deepening it now. It will be um, oh, even a closer uh, collaboration between the countries now. Sara. If I may also continue on that collaboration thought, I think that it's very important to uh, collaborate throughout the en energy sector. And, and uh, we have a very good relationship with the electricity TSOs uh, in, 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 in our countries. And I think that we are not developing competing systems, we are developing complementing systems. We need both electricity, but then other parts of this infrastructure can support most cost-efficient development of the energy system for the future. So this is uh, one point to consider also. Mm -hmm. And uh, Igor. Yes, I, uh, I, I do think a very interesting future. I do believe in uh, uh, even increased integration of our energy systems, of course. Also, I think the development uh, in the offshore part of the Baltic Sea and the Botnian Bay will be very exciting. I think that we will attract many European and international players there because of the huge potential uh, that we see in the wind power. And uh, I do also believe that we will satisfy the needs of our uh, domestic industries and eventually become exporters of energy to the European Union. Uh... How will you integrate stakeholders and upstream, downstream companies uh, as you move forward? Should I continue for, yeah, or, or start maybe? Yeah, we have a, a project plan developed. Uh, one of the key uh, work streams there is uh, to uh, work together with the stakeholders, up, upstream and downstream companies, and, and our plan is to invite everyone to this collaboration, hear their thoughts, understand their needs, and, and uh, develop this together further. For Mr. Farmanbar, which role or responsibility do you think Swedish... Sorry, I... I missed that question, mm -hmm. so <laughs> please send that me again, if you just want to. Uh, so let's take this one. So uh, how do you see, Mr. Farman Bar? Uh, Will a project like this accelerate uh, green transition? Uh, in, in Finland and uh, as a, a minister of Sweden, how important is that also uh, there in Sweden? 
I think it will definitely accelerate uh, the amount of industrial job creation and the, the new investments that we see in northern parts of Sweden and Finland. So I think from that perspective, it's, it's, uh, for me, it's clear that this will do a really good job on, on that sense. And th that in itself will help the green transition. Um, well, and the thing that we're doing it with Finland is, is I mean, it's, uh, it's uh, our neighboring country that we have had a long, long, long time a good cooperation with and that we need to strengthen this cooperation. Uh, and I'm really glad that we are, uh, as Hans mentioned, we're deepening the, the cooperation that we're having in, in this area within, within energy, energy transition. So I think this is really important. And now, thank you for your... Uh, answering and thank you the questions. Uh, we will have now a five minute break and after that this main stage will be silent. The program continues in Swedish with Mia Odabas on the Nordic Energy stage and the Finnish program will continue on the Gaskri Finland stage. You can select your stage from the left hand side of the platform and thank you to Minister Farmanbar and all of you, our guests in Sweden, have a very nice day and enjoy your five-minute break starting now. Thank you. <laughs>